Sherwood Sykes Superbikes. We start this adventure for reasons of wanting to start it here at Horden, right on the Durham coast, home of David Sykes Superbikes. But all of this area were coal mines, pit villages, the whole coastline. That's how it survived. That's how it grew. But it's also famous for a couple of other reasons. It was this area that was made famous by the film Billy Elliot. And it's also the road that I used to travel on every other Saturday as we went down to see my father's parents that lived at Hartlepool. And we had a Ford Cortina Mark II with the registration number PLE 416E. I've never forgotten that. I've I can't remember any others, but I remember that one. How strange. The whole of this area has changed dramatically though. As all areas have really over the years. But the, the coal mines, the pits, so many of them used to go out under the sea. And that's why the coastline was so prolific. In having pits. Every, just every few miles there was a different pit. It was also the area when the miners strike took place. In the 80s. Families fell out. They fought each other, brother against brother, as we come into Easington Colliery. This is the area where Billy Elliot became famous within Easington Colliery. This is where it was based back in the day when the pits were working. And you can see, you can feel the atmosphere. This whole area was decimated, absolutely decimated, when the collieries closed. And straight in front, just as we're about to go around this bend, that's where the colliery was. There was a massive great pit there. Pit heads, you know, the wheels at the top of the, the mine shafts. Just to the right here. The vision that's in my mind is, is striking. But this whole area was just to do with the pits. And when it closed, thanks to Maggie Thatcher, the whole area was ruined, totally ruined. Unfortunately, the area is also known for a horrendous pit disaster. There was an accident in the pits. And I'll put the exact number in the guide, but I believe it was round about 180 people died. in the 50s, 180 people devastated the area, totally devastated the area. Those buildings on the right there, they are the old pit buildings, the old school, Easton Colliery School. I don't know if this area is even recovered yet from all those years ago, after the disaster, as well as when the pit closed. There's no sign of the pit anymore. There's a few monuments kicking about, but there's nothing left of the, the pit. In fact, as I look across to the right, it looks like it's allotments so that they can go and 
get a piece of ground and grow their crops. And I started it there purposefully because this whole area that we're going to be travelling through on this Durham story was just everywhere you looked were coal mines. The Durham coal fields. I mean, as a young boy travelling backwards and forwards on this road down to Hartlepool and back, the skyline was littered with the silhouettes of the pits, the mine shafts, the heads, you know, with the wheels. Incredible. And yet, we closed them down and we're importing millions of tonnes of coal from other mainland European countries. God, it beggars belief. And of course now you've got the open cast coal mines that are digging down to take the coal out. This whole area, this whole area that we're looking around was littered with coal mines, pits, absolutely littered. So you had a pit at Horden, a pit at Eason Colliery, a pit at Hetton, a pit at South Hetton, a pit at Easington Lane. These were just a few miles apart, underground, with just seam after seam of, of coal. There's the memory, South Hetton Colliery, 1831 to 1983. Closed, area decimated. There's the pit head wheels, look. For the pit that was here, the pit head wheels. In memory of the South Hetton colliery. The pits, coal mines, collieries, it's all the same thing. In 1983, all closed down because of Maggie Thatcher. The coal miners' strike. God, it was awful. It was awful. And there's people, there's families still split now. They won't speak to each other because of it. My dad was a policeman. He had to come along and, and police some of these demonstrations. They were getting that much overtime. The holidays were called Costa del Scargill because it was Arthur Scargill who did it all. And as we come into Easington Lane, this, when I was born, in Bishop Auckland and then lived in South Church or South Church Road I think it was I can't remember at all but we moved to Easington Lane but I'm going to turn right here because I don't think we're going to be able to park and then see it oh god I can't go that way this is where I first moved to, was here. This was the back lane. Bloody hell. Huh. ghost of a time gone by. That field there, I used to ride across that field with my dad in a little red tractor, stood on the tractor as he drove it across working for the local farmer to supplement his meagre police wages. And that was my house there. That one. In the back garden one winter, it snowed that heavily that he carved out of the snow a car that I could sit in. 
And I remember sitting in it and my arse was freezing. But on a more funny sort of note, I guess, I also had a rabbit hutch with a rabbit in. And I can see my father now grabbing my rabbit by the back legs and hitting it behind the head with a poker to kill it. It must have been so we could eat it, because we were that poor. But that was the house where I also had my first experience of nearly dying. I caught German measles and got a horrendous temperature. And was told years later, of course, that I nearly died. Directly opposite here used to be a farm, hence why my dad would be driving the red tractor. But directly opposite there was a farm and it was the first time I'd ever seen milk going over what I can only class as Wrigley Tin. But it was pasteurising it. It was cooling it down to kill off the bugs. And on the left there was the school. The infant, infant school, now a housing estate. But well, that's where the school was. That's the playground and everything. Oh my God, there's still that there. That was the school. It's on the right there, there was a shop I could walk down to and buy my weekly Mars bar, where I had to cut it up into six, five or six slices so that it would last all week. I was allowed a slice of Mars bar a day. But it's also this region where my father was a traffic cop. And so he would ride around all these streets in his black Jaguar with his single blue light on the top and a bell on the front. <laughs> relating a story to me many years later where the bell would, as he was chasing other vehicles, ding-a-ling-a-ling, ding-a-ling-a-ling and when the battery would die it would go ding and then a little bit later ling but that was the first house that I lived in but it was a pit village nothing but a pit village and this is where the pits used to be over here <laughs> 